Hi guys, welcome to Coternix Corner. So in this video, I want to share with you how I built my wood framework for my all wire cages. Uh, I've had several requests online for the measurements and stuff, and I just had to build another one, so I thought, you know, this would be a good time to go ahead and shoot a quick video and uh, give you guys the breakdown on uh, cutting this, assembling it, and you know, all the measurements and whatnot. Uh, basically what it is, uh, the framework is two by two construction, uh, but what I've found is the cost of two by fours, or I'm sorry, two by twos is almost as expensive as buying a two by four. So what I did was I went out and I bought three two by fours and ripped them down on my table saw. Um, that way for the price of one two by two, you're actually getting two if you uh, buy two by fours and rip them down. Now I know everybody doesn't have a table saw, so you may have to just, you know, bite the bullet and go ahead and buy the two by twos. But uh, first off, you're going to need three two by two or three two by fours. Actually, three and a half because uh, of the uh, cross pieces and the diagonal braces. But uh, three two by fours ripped down will give you six two by four twos, and you're going to need four for the legs, and then four for these main cross pieces, and then you're going to need a couple for uh, front to back pieces on um, the. The legs are six foot tall, I believe. Yeah, 72 inches. So um, you'll need four of them at 72 inches. And then this piece here is 35 and a half inches. And you'll need also four of those. Uh, the reason I made it 35 and a half was because the cages are roughly 36 inches wide. Um, the wire is 36 inches wide, but by the time you get the outside pieces on, uh, you're going to be a, just a little bit over 36. And also that helps to make it a little bit easier to slide the cages up inside the rack once you've got it done and screw them down. So, uh, again, you're going to need four legs at 72 inches or six feet tall. And then you'll need four of these cross pieces at 35 and a half inches. And then for the front to back pieces, now this really doesn't matter as much as long as they're not over 20 inches, but I made mine 14 and a half inches and you'll need one, two, three, and four of them. Um, another thing you wanna make sure that you do is like say when you're cutting your, your legs and your cross pieces out, make sure you save all your scraps because you can use the scraps to cut your diagonal pieces and uh, you'll need one, two, three, four of the diagonal pieces. And basically what you do is take a piece that's roughly eight to 10 inches long and 45 each end, and that will give you your corner braces. Okay, so once I've got everything cut out, and I like to cut everything out first before I start assembling, uh, once I get everything out, I start by assembling each side. And on each side, you, you take your two legs and your two, 14 and a half inch cross pieces and you're going to make sure that you want to glue them up with a good uh, wood glue um, and then what I use is a three inch screw. I also pre-drill all these holes prior to running the screw in. That's just going to, because sometimes you're screwing a little bit closer to the edge, uh, that's going to prevent the wood from splitting if you run it in a little bit too hard. So what I'll do is I'll lay it down and what, I use a, a five gallon bucket to lay the other end of the wood on. Uh, that way it supports that end while I'm gluing up and screwing this end together. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll do the, the top bar piece first and then I will use the, the bottom rail. And when you're pre-drilling these holes on the legs, the top hole has to be, has to split a two by two the bottom hole is going to be located at 16 inches from the bottom from the floor so that will that will put your bottom manure tray 16 inches off the floor and uh, give you plenty of room underneath the cage you know for storing stuff and whatnot um, so screw screw your top piece in first and then your your bottom piece and then flip it over and screw the other two by two uh, in the same fashion onto the other end of it and then put it aside and go ahead and uh, 
do your other side. And once you've got uh, once you got your two side pieces together, you can go ahead. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and put the 45 degree pieces in now. They can go on either of the front or the back side of the cage. It doesn't really matter. It's just a sport. Um, but then, once you got your two sides together, you want to go ahead and put your cross pieces in, and that'll hold them together. And doing the same fashion, I'll you know pre pre drill everything. Now, because we've got a, a screw. I don't know if you can see this up here or not, but because we've got a screw going through the top one direction, you got to take your drill and screw from the other direction just below the, the screw that's going into this side piece. Um, if, if you don't and you, you try to run a screw in it and you hit that other screw, uh, you might have a hard time getting it in there. So pre-drilling everything really helps um, and it makes it you know to where you're not going to hit that existing screw from the, the side piece. So again, you're going to take your 35 and a half inch long pieces and you are going to mount them uh, one at the top and then again one at the bottom and you can line that one up with the, the side pieces um, or if you want to measure it, it's going to be at 16 inches off the ground. Um, the only other thing that you want to do, and I, I use scrap pieces for this, you can use uh, either two by two or if you got an old pallet you know take the uh, the main boards the runners off the pallet and cut them down a size and I, I screw them down at the bottom just to give it like a, a base kind of stabilize it a little bit it'll, it'll also make the cage less likely to want to tip forward or backwards because you got a little bit uh, wider foot base on it uh, the only other thing I do as far as woodwork goes is I will cut a piece of plywood that's about the width of a five gallon bucket and I'll, I'll lay it on top of here and screw it down um, that that way my my water bucket's got a place to sit up there uh, when I go to plumb the water system and the last thing I do on the framework before hanging any of the cages is put a good coat of paint on it that's going to help you uh, preserve the wood it's going to make it last a lot longer it's also going to keep any manure that gets you know on the wood um, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to, you know, hose it off or pressure wash it off just to keep the cage clean. And it also, if you're using a good quality paint, like an outdoor paint, um, it's also going to keep the wood from absorbing the moistures uh, from the manure. So it'll help out that way. And then as far as hanging your cages, uh, that's really simple. Basically what I did was uh, I measured down from the top and I made marks. Um, where I want the top of each of my cages to be. Um, the, the top mark is right about four and a half inches down from the top. The second mark from that's going to be about 21 inches down from there. And then the, the last mark on your cage will be about 30, 37 and a half inches. And that's to line up the, the top corner of your cage or the top part of your cage. And when you mount your cages, you're going to get the same measurements on the back um, because you want this area, this surface area, the top of this cage is also the support or the, the rest, which is what your manure tray rests on. So you want that level. So if you come off the back of the cage with the same measurements that you used at the front, you should, in theory, be, be level. What I do is I'll actually lay a level on it and... Uh, make sure that that's level when I'm screwing it down. Um, as far as your, your rollout angle, if you built the cage correctly, and I'm going to leave a link to building these wire cages, both the grow out uh, wire cage and the uh, rollout or the layer cage. Uh, if, you, if you built it according to specs, your uh, fall will be roughly an inch and a half in 20 inches. That means from, from this point, this point here is uh, an inch and a half higher than the forward point of the cage. And that just makes for the, uh, the eggs roll out um, without, you know, so much speed that they're, they're damaging the eggs when they roll forward. Uh, another thing that I kind of changed uh, from the older cages that I had built, the first cages that I built, was what I hang the cages with. 
I used to use quarter 20 bolts and fender washers and just, you know, drill a hole and put a fender washer on this side with a bolt going through and then a fender washer on that side and then a nut on the inside. But I found one, <laughs> it's a little more expensive uh, to do it that way. So what I'm doing now is I just have a fender washer and a inch and a half long uh, drywall screw or, or exterior grade type of screw you can use. Um, drywall screws will work fine as long as you get the coarse screw, but decking screws, those all work fine. And I put one in each corner uh, on the back and well, two on the back and then four on the front. I got one here and one here. I don't know if you can, yeah, I guess you can see that. One here and one here on both sides. And that will uh, uh, support the cage. I mean, they're not going anywhere. You could, you could fill this cage up with uh, birds and feed and everything, and they're not going anywhere. And it is a lot cheaper than buying the bolts, pre-drilling all your holes, getting everything to line up level, and then you know tightening it down. This just makes it so much easier. Uh, the only other thing that I want to say, and I haven't done it yet on this one, but I plan on doing it, is when you build the cage on this bottom rail here where the the eggs roll underneath uh, you can leave it like that if you, if you follow the uh, cage build instructions but what i've been doing uh, recently is buying a either an eighth inch or three sixteenth inch steel dowel 36 inches long and i'll just lay that right along the bottom of this uh, opening here and j clip it to this bottom piece all the way across what that does is it beefs up this front area quite a bit and uh, keep it stout enough to where the birds can't, if they were to try to get under it, they can't really press past that bar because it's, you know, it's too heavy for them. So I think that's about it, guys. Like I said, I just wanted to show you uh, how I put these um, frames together. Um, I don't know, did I mention the, yeah, I did mention the, uh, the braces. You're going to have a brace going front to back on the side. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then down on the bottom, you're going to want your 45 angle brace going left to right and, or side to side. That way you've got uh, forward and back motion is kind of restricted by the base. Same with the side to side motion. It's not going to go that way. So guys, I hope this helped. Uh, like I say, I've had quite a few inquiries, you know, about measurements and everything and, and how to put these together. So I thought, you know, I'm building a, a cage. I'll go ahead and just do a quick video for you guys. So guys, um, I want to thank you for watching the uh, video today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe, hit that bell. That way you'll get notifications of any new and upcoming videos. Uh, it really helps with uh, the YouTube algorithms. So thanks for joining me today, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.